Welcome back to Rocks Talks. My name is Roxanne Wilson, coming to you from beautiful Mission Beach, San Diego. Hello. Stunning. Hopefully you can see the water there if you're listening, or if you're watching, I should say, on the YouTube channel. One of the great things about being here in San Diego to celebrate my 40th is that I've met some and had the great fortune of having some special people impart wisdom, knowledge, um, and friendship in my life who came to celebrate with me. Yay. And one of them happens to be Megan E. Butler. Hello, Megan. Hi, Rox. If you listened to season two, and if you didn't, you should go back and I'll put a link to her episode, but we've had Megan on the show before. Um, Megan is not only amazing in a thousand a gajillion different ways, but she also has found her niche really speaking truth out there for the masses, whether it's in the corporate world or just people. If you're interacting with people, you need to hear her message. <laughs> and so you can find um, most of her work on Inc. Magazine, mm -hmm. um, as well as Fast Company, yes, and more other great things coming to you. So thank you, first of all, Megan, for being here. Thank you for having me. Uh, absolutely. I'm excited. Had to. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me, I, you know, I kind of teased it, mm -hmm. but what is it that you're talking about that is really take in Firestorm? Um, I write about emotional intelligence at work. EI. Yeah. Mm -hmm. EI. EI. Um, and, you know, it's something that we all have, but to varying degrees, mm -hmm. and um, really has become quite the buzz since the 90s when it first came out. Um, but so now we live in a space and time that allows for a richer conversation and intentional development. Now you emotional. say in the workplace. Yes. Do you, why the workplace? Because EI is everywhere. E EI is everywhere. Um, most of the literature about emotional intelligence mm -hmm. is written for the senior executive leadership. Uh -huh. And it's predicated upon the assumption they have 30 years of experience from which to draw. Which is fair. I mean, to some extent, EI is, an, is a maturity arc. Right. Also, that's where all the money is. <laughs> But I don't really uh, care about the money. My, my um, passion is speaking to young and mid-careerists mm -hmm. or people who maybe are older but owning businesses for the first time, starting businesses. So the um, masses, basically. Basically the masses. Mm -hmm. um, because I know that had I had an introduction to the framework much earlier mm -hmm. and had I had all of my bosses were very well intentioned um, and cared about me a lot, but not always very clear as to what was happening in those coaching moments. And, and had I had that, I think I might have had a very different career trajectory. Yeah. Though I love the one I'm on and I would you wouldn't be here. And I wouldn't be here. With so, the masses. Um, yeah. Well, and it's interesting you say that because I think some of it is those coaching moments. Yes. The coach doesn't know they're coaching, and the, co the coachee doesn't, doesn't know, know they're being coached. coached. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's just constructive feed feedback. That was nice. Yeah, exactly. Okay, next. I know. can decide if I want right. to write that off or not. Right. Um, and so that's part of the problem. We don't really get educated in that in the world, no. though. No, no. A lot of it is usually corrective. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of coaching comes at corrective moments when somebody's done something wrong or, or is at a critical intersection in their professional experience. and. And my whole point is that these are conversations um, that we're raising each other as people, mm -hmm. essentially. And whether it's in your personal life or at work, that um, there are some very meaningful ways to have conversations like this where everybody is heard and understands what's happening. So we're parenting, basically, Basically, each other. we're parenting each other. <laughs> yes, it is an act of parenting. Interesting. So tell us more about, like, why is, why don't we know about it? Okay. Um, well, it's always been around it mm -hmm. is very very much what makes us human mm -hmm. so if um, it's, it's the basic definition right is uh, the ability to understand regulate and manage your own emotions your emotions and understand and influence the emotions of others understand and influence the emotion of others. others so the first part I get I think about like my nephews who's growing up in certain points yep. they don't know they like no. feel something and they don't know how to right. respond it's a correctly tantrum. To it. exactly they, just, they can't regulate exactly mm -hmm. but repeat the second half because I feel like maybe mm -hmm. that's the crux. this is this is the crux right mm -hmm. because um, it is to understand and influence the emotions of others understand and influence the emotions Emotion. of others which means there are two people in the dynamic mm -hmm. and it's not only about you at least two maybe <laughs> at more. least two maybe more um you gotta be really intelligent to be able to do that it's like a master of game right in kind a, of you know the way. best people at it it is much like a chess game yeah. they're seeing the whole board they've uh -huh. taken themselves out of the equation they have the self-awareness they've removed themselves and they can see the whole board um and they've taken emotion for themselves out of the equation yes 
Not necessarily. So that's a common misconception. And I think actually a lot of people who are writing about emotional intelligence, which I think there's room for everyone. There can't be enough of right. it. But I often see them misusing the term. Um, kind of couching it wholesale as empathy or compassion, which mm -hmm. those are parts of it, mm -hmm. but they're not all of it. Mm -hmm. um, what was the question? So I was asking, so if you're able to master it, be that oh, chess master, yes. do you have to take the emotion out of that? Yes. Uh, it's That's where we talk about boundaries, mm -hmm. self-boundaries. Um, and the leaders that we see do that the best are not typically perceived as being emotionally intelligent, where they actually very much are. So one thing I wrote about recently was that a lot of um, bosses that we've had over the years um, seem aloof mm -hmm. and uninterested and kind of cold. Yeah. But at the same time, they're incredibly effective at their job. So it's this tension we can't always solve for. And um, as somebody reporting into them, that can be very often. Can you spot someone who's emotionally intelligent? Like, can you look just at the trajectory of, like, the big CEOs out there and go, oh, Steve Jobs, he was emotionally intelligent, just for example. Like, can you tell yeah. that because of your wisdom and knowledge? <laughs> Generally speaking, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. because it's not just what success they've created, but what they've inspired in others. Uh-huh. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And it's because, right, because again... it's not a personal pursuit. It, it, Somebody else has to be involved in the equation. So you really do have to remove yourself from the, oh my gosh, he likes me, he doesn't like me. Mm -hmm. Which we have, I mean, mm -hmm. I think the struggle at times with work is that you're there for 12 plus hours. Yes, you spend more time with these people than your own family. So, uh, which I think is mm -hmm. so apropos that you said it's like parenting each other. Yes. So how does one get to a point where they're emotionally intelligent and it can either help them, whether at the top mm -hmm. or they're mid mm -hmm. or they're just starting out? Mm -hmm. Um, well, with intention. Mm -hmm. So we hear a lot about, uh, it's also called EQ, so emotional quotient. An intellectual quotient, the IQ, is universally accepted. There is a, a standard measurement of it, and you get one, and it might vary a degree or two over the course of your life, but it doesn't really change. Mm -hmm. um, emotional intelligence or an emotional question, quotient is measurable. There are a number of different tools that you can use. Becoming more widely accepted, uh, but it is kind of a spectrum. Like everybody has it again in varying degrees, and you can mark where you are and then take take on specific um, exercises or um, engagements to improve your own emotional intelligence wherever you find kind of a deficiency or an opportunity. Oh, wow. So, um, for example. Um, in my own, mm -hmm. for a long time, it was self-awareness, which is the, the fundamental building block. If you don't have that, you're never going to become social, uh, emotionally intelligent. Okay, so wait, let's go back one yeah. step. How do you test your own EQ? Okay. Uh, well, I mean, if you Google it, there are a lot of assessments. I use the um, EQI 2.0. It's a, a Canadian company, and it's one of the only psycho... I think it's the only psychometric assessment. So okay. it's regulated by the APA and the AMA, and I had to take a very intense <laughs> training course in order to understand and administer it because it's regulated. Um, and they use a framework that has a number of different subsets that they're measuring against. So they're looking, and then they're looking at the relationship between those, those um, building blocks, mm -hmm. essentially. So I, um, I scored lower in problem solving than I expected to. But when we looked at the assessment and we put it up against um, independence, like how I make decisions, I'm independent, am I an independent thinker? We saw that um, there was opportunity for me in a team environment to be um, uh, not aggressive, but more assured. Mm -hmm. And my assertive. decision making and assertive in my decision, like make the decision and it's okay to seek opinions of others, but not to rely on seeking interesting right and that was a great that's something I can work with mm -hmm. and then I've seen the move I've seen the needle move as I've worked so you can take a quiz mm -hmm. an assessment yeah, like a 20 test. and it lets you know and then you know what you need to work on yes but you're saying that first everyone has to be self-aware self-aware if you're not self-aware you're never going to become emotionally intelligent how does one teach self-awareness oh I'm so glad you asked <laughs> are you because I'm like I'm, I how am. do you do that I am it, well it's funny because through the um through the action of writing basically a lecture for an uh, undergrad class at UT, 
I, I kind of tripped into creating my own framework for teaching self-awareness. Oh, and nice. I was like, wow, this would have worked for me if I were, you know, at any point, really. Mm-hmm. And I look at it as as basically a degree program. If I were going to university to receive a degree, to earn a degree in Mm self-awareness, this is what it would look like. Freshman year is, um, I have a feeling I can name it. Sophomore year is freshman plus, which is, um, I I know why I'm feeling that. Junior year is I can regulate that. Senior year is I can do all of this and now I can create boundaries. Wow. And then, like, your grad level of self-awareness is that you can take yourself off the board. So you can take yourself out of the equation and see everything. See what how everybody else is having that experience. The chess master. Yes. So it's five steps. The six P.I. doctorate. <laughs> What's the doctorate? That's when you can, you can do that for larger groups of people and help other people wow. through that. So how long does it take for self? Like, if you're completely not, mm-hmm. or un-self-aware, not self-aware, yeah. how long does that take to go through the curriculum? Yeah. That's funny. I never put a timeline on it because Mm -hmm. you're talking about what makes us us Mm -hmm. and everybody is moving at a different pace Mm -hmm. and everybody is coming in to the dynamic with very different experiences and histories and biases, right? Things they have to work through. Right. And and to a large extent, what we're saying is, is yes, most of this is a natural maturity curve, Mm -hmm. but by working on it with intention, you can hotwire that, those, uh, that progress. So... For one person, and they could kind of crush the course really quickly. Um, for others, it's just they're gonna like I did. I just needed more life experience and challenge in order to get there. Was it because you were trying to make sense of your own experiences that you stumbled upon this in the first place? Yes, mm-hmm. yes. I would say um, my career has been unconventional, mm-hmm. unexpected, and very exciting. But there have been times that have. Um, clinically been dramatic, yeah. <laughs> you know, informative experiences have been very, very difficult. And I'm kind of in that, that late thirties time where therapists call it convergence or integration where, um, a lot of past experience or all the dots are starting to connect and mm-hmm. you're starting to see how everything is tied together and related and why one thing happened and another thing happened and, you know, it's like dominoes, like yeah. seeing how everything led. And, and I, and it, so when it finally clicked for me, and I started writing about it, I was encor- encouraged by how it resonated with like people I don't know sending me emails and saying, we need more of this. You right. know, this You have put it in a way that I can understand and it's not boring. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I've read or listened to every single EQ book probably ever written. The Harvard Business Review has many wonderful pieces. I'm sure it puts a good like sleep. Yeah, but it's, it's a bunch of people saying a lot of the same thing in a lot of the same way, but calling it something slightly different or telling a few different stories, but all from the same place. And I'm like, if we made it more relatable and approachable, I think I think more people would be able to address could hear it. it. Yeah, yeah, and could understand it. So you do need to start. You need to do an online course on that. I'm just going to put that. <laughs> Seriously. Okay. So okay. once you have the, yes. um, we have self aware. Yes. Then what's next? Or is that everything in a nutshell? Well, it's yes and no. Mm-hmm. So they're they're kind of. You know, you're talking about self-awareness and self-actualization, and that's really understanding yourself in terms of the dynamic, not just what you feel, but how are you impacting it? How do your feelings impact others, et cetera? Um, And it's just, it's kind of this slow and steady widening lens, right? So it becomes less about you. Mm -hmm. And more about others. And more about others. Which is amazing. And you wrote something about gratitude being the cure or antidote, basically. To all of this. Yeah. Gratitude seems, a lot of this is very soft. And when it comes to especially senior executive leadership and all of the management curriculum and and frameworks that are out there, um, it's harder for people to take it as seriously as they do something um, that has like a measurable. Two plus two equals four. four. That's really easy. I get the math. Right. Uh (laughs) Um, People are always going to be the hardest part of anything we do at work Mm -hmm. or anywhere else. Like you can master, you could learn to program tomorrow if you wanted, and you could be a crackerjack at it. Um, But when it comes to working as part of a team, people are always going to be the hardest part of any Mm -hmm. job. So if we can't get it right with each other, you know, Mm -hmm. kind of the extension of that is like, do we have any business programming technology and deep machine learning and AI to read us if we can't get it right? That's so, huge. Yeah. That's so huge. I've kind of stumbled in, into this <laughs> global conversation. I, I love that. Yet. Okay. So, I mean, 
any other takeaways? Because I feel like the course that you just mm -hmm. gave us <laughs> is a huge takeaway. And But what else would you say to someone who's trying to figure this out? Because it sounds to me like if you figure this out early in your mm -hmm. career, you're like balling. And I saw that. I saw that with a lot of people who may not have been awesome at the technical part of their job, but mm -hmm. they were really great. Like we see this in politics a lot. People are amazing diplomats. Mm -hmm. They may not have a hard skill, mm -hmm. but they're amazing. It's like diplomacy. So much of it is diplomacy and tact. And Likeability factor. Yeah. And, and it's not just, you know, I mean, charisma is important, but I mean, it kind of brings up a good question. Somebody asked me recently, um, well, I asked our pastor and I said can you who is the most intelligent emotionally intelligent person in the Bible and I can't remember who he said but it was a bad guy basically he said well he is but he was an awful person so he's not was it Esau or was it I think it was Esau, Esau. yeah and I said I said I disagree that he I think some of the worst people in the entire world are incredibly emotionally intelligent which makes it possible for them to be that bad to other people exactly so um, it's it's something that we all have and it's something makes that makes it possible because A, they're able to detach their emotions from it, and then B, they're able to manipulate. Is that why? Yeah, yeah okay. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're able to um, to persuade and influence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All Think of about... the bad, the terrible, terrible people. Some, some of the most emotionally intelligent um, executives and CEOs we've ever known might have been horrible to work with, yeah. but the way that the products that they turned out because they were able to influence their teams the way they did. Whether it was through fear yeah. or whatever right. it might have been. They might have some deficiencies or opportunities within their own e EQ set, mm -hmm. um, you know, but they leaned hard into what they were best at. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So I guess I would say you, you said, what is the one thing, you know, we should take away from this? And is that one, we're, we all have it. Two, we're all capable of being better. Mm -hmm. And three, that it is possible. Um, and there are tools that you can use and things that you can read to help you build intention around that. Mm -hmm. Because it is a process. We, we are always learning and growing. And, and like with anything, if you have no intention, you're just going to flail. Yes. You've got to have a focus. Yeah, you got to have a focus. Like give yourself some, some intentions around it. Not goals, but intentions. So if someone asks you if you have emotional intelligence, yes, you do. Yes, yes, one, yes, you do. You can improve it. You we can, can do better. It. Yeah, we can do better. And there's skills out there and yes. things to do and there that. there are tools out there to help you do that. I love that. Yes. Thank you so much, Megan. Yes. This has been fantastic. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Absolutely. If you're watching, um, there's links, as of course, that you'll see. I would love you to mm -hmm. follow Megan. Um, her stories, her articles are amazing. If you're listening, you. go to my website, RoxanneWilson.com, and you'll find more information about where you can find Megan all around the globosphere <laughs> of the internet. Um, yeah. And I hope that also, we're going to put on there too, if we can, that link to that survey that you were talking about. Is that yeah. possible? Yes. I mean, it, it, there is, I, I can administer it. And we awesome. can, if somebody's oh. interested, we can talk about that because it's not. It Listen, is. EQ <laughs> Dr. Butler thing, yeah. will help it's you out. It's regulated, so you can't just, But you, you know, can administer it for them. Yeah. Okay, that's fantastic. Yeah, I would I love to offer that. Mm -hmm. That's phenomenal. Yeah. And I encourage everyone to do that. I'm going to do it too. Okay, you got it. Thank you, Megan, so much. Thanks for listening to Rocks Talks. Thank would you. love for you to subscribe, to pass this along to someone that you know. I know it can speak to their lives as well, too. And we'll see you next time. Thanks. Yay. Yay. Brilliant.